Hello viewers, this is Too Fast here. In today's video, I'll show you this brand new mirror dash cam from the company Acumen. This one here is XR10 Plus. Being a rear view mirror dash cam, it has a 10 inch color LCD touchscreen and it has a front and rear camera that records in full HD 1080p. Now this dash cam also comes with a GPS antenna, built in Wi-Fi and parking monitor recording. If you connect this to your backup light, it will also operate as a backup camera with parking guidelines. In this video, I'll go over all the features available on this unit, and we'll take a look at the daytime and nighttime recording, as well as the parking monitor recording. So stay tuned. Let me show you the unboxing of this XR10 digital rear view mirror dash cam. Here's a rear view mirror dash cam. GPS antenna. Rear camera and the rear camera cable. Plastic pry tool. Rubber straps for installing the mirror. Mounting clips. It also comes with a 32 gigabyte micro SD memory card. Wiretap for connecting to the backup light and a micro SD memory card reader. Inside this box is also the user manual. Cigarette lighter power cable. Here's a look at everything you get with this dash cam. Now I want to mention there's an accessory you can get for this dash cam and it's this hardware kit you see right here. If you connect this power cable to the fuse box, then the dash cam will be able to do time lapse recording while the vehicle is parked. Let's have a closer look at this XR10 Plus dash cam. On the front is a color LCD touchscreen. If you measure one corner to the other, it's 10 inch, but there is a bezel around the edge. Looking at the top, right here is a mini USB connector for powering the dash cam. Next to it is AV port. This is for connecting to the rear camera. Next to it is a micro SD memory card slot. And over here is a GPS port. Let's have a look at the back. On the left side, there's a speaker. Right here is a microphone. Next to it is a recess switch. On the right side, there's a front facing camera. Now this camera records in full HD 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames per second. The viewing angle of this camera is a wide 170 degrees. Now depending on how wide your factory mirror is, you can extend the width of this dash cam by sliding the front camera outwards. With the camera extended, now you can fit this over the factory mirror. You can also adjust the angle of the front camera by swiveling this. Now looking at the bottom, Right here is a power switch. You can also use it to turn off the LCD display. To install this dash cam, it's very simple. Use the included rubber straps you see right here. Now they've included two sets of straps. As you can see, this one is longer and this one is shorter. And depending on the size of the factory mirror that you'll be fitting this over, you can choose to use the longer straps or the shorter one. When you install this, what you'll need to do is hook one end of the rubber strap onto this hook you see right here. With the dash cam placed in front of the factory mirror, wrap this rubber strap around the mirror and then hook it to the bottom hook you see right here. And then do the same thing with the other strap. Now this dash cam comes with a 32 gigabyte micro SD memory card, which is very nice because you don't have to buy your own. And to install it is very simple. Insert the memory card into the top card slot. To power the dash cam, you can install the cigarette lighter power cable or the hardware cable that you need to connect to the fuse box. Now if you don't use this hardware kit and only use the cigarette lighter power cable, this dash cam does have a built-in rechargeable battery and it can do parking monitor recording. If it detects an impact to the vehicle, then it'll automatically turn on and record a short video clip. Now, both of these power cable has a mini USB connector that you plug into the USB connector on the dash cam to power it. Here, I'll plug the power cable to the mini USB connector on the dash cam. Next, I'll connect this GPS antenna to the dash cam. There's a rear camera. The resolution is 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames per second. The viewing angle of this camera is 120 degrees and this camera is waterproof so you can install this outside the vehicle or inside the vehicle. Now you connect this to the dash cam using this long cable you see right here. So you'll be able to run this from the front of the vehicle all the way to the back. On one end of the cable you have this connector and you plug this into the AV in port. Now you'll see there's also a red cable that you see right here. If you connect this cable to the backup light when you put the car in reverse the LCD display will switch to a lower angle view, which will give you a backup view to help you with the reversing of the vehicle. Now I'll remove this protective film and let's power this on.
Once the dash cam power on, the recording will begin automatically. That's indicated by the flashing red dot right here. Next to it, you have the icon for the GPS antenna. Once it has satellite lock, this icon will be green. At the bottom, you have a compass and the speed you're traveling at. On the right side is the time and dates. Right now, you're looking at the front camera view. If you swipe to the left, this will show you the back camera view. Swipe again. There's a side-by-side -side view with the front camera on the left and the back camera on the right. Swipe again. Now we're back to the front camera view. Tap the screen and the menu will come up. You can adjust the brightness of the LCD. If you press the record button, you will stop the recording. Press it again to start the recording. Next to it is a camera icon. Press this and you can take a picture. In the middle is a microphone icon. Press this to mute the microphone. Press it again to unmute. If you want to lock this video clip so it will not be overwritten, press this lock icon right here. Press it again to unlock it. Let's stop the recording. Let's go into settings. The first menu item is resolution. By default, the camera resolution is set to 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames per second. You can also set it to 720p if you want. Next menu item, footage duration. This is a loop recording. Now the dash cam will record both the front and rear camera simultaneously and continuously while the dash cam is powered on. And it does this by recording a series of short videos. So right now the video recording is set to one minute increments. You can set it for three minutes or five minutes. I'll set this to three minutes. Next, night mode, by default is off. If you enable this, then you'll get a better nighttime video image. Exposure, you can increase or decrease the exposure of the video. LDWS, this is a lane departure warning system. If you enable this, if your car veer left or right, then it'll give you a visual warning on the LCD. Auto brightness, by default is off. If you enable this, then it'll automatically set the brightness of the LCD. Impact sensitivity, by default is off. This is a G sensor in the dash cam. While you're driving, if there's an impact to the vehicle, the dash cam can automatically lock that video clip so it will not be overwritten. I'm gonna set this to medium. Parking impact sensitivity, by default is off. This is a parking monitor mode. If you enable this, then when you turn off the ignition, if it detects an impact to the vehicle, then it will automatically turn on and record a short video clip. Display auto power off, by default is off. This is a screensaver. You can set the LCD to turn off automatically after a period of time. Here you can set it for one minute or three minutes. I'm gonna leave this off. Language, here you can select different languages. Speed unit, you can set it for miles per hour or kilometers per hour. Time zone select, here you can set the GMT time zone. Volume, there's a volume of a speaker. You can set it for off, high, medium, or low. Light frequency, 50 hertz or 60 hertz. Clock settings, here you can set the date and time. Time format, 12 hours or 24 hours. Rear camera rotation, by default off. So depending on how you install the back camera, whether it's upside down or right side up, you can rotate the image 180 degrees. Wi-Fi car cam, by default off. Now this dash cam does have built-in Wi-Fi and you can connect it to a mobile app. I'm gonna turn this on right now and I'll show you how to set up the mobile app later. Format SD card, here you can format the micro SD memory card. Reset factory settings, here you can set the settings back to factory default. Firmware version, this will show you the software version of this dash cam. And this is the last menu setting. Now we're back to resolution. When you're done, go back. So let me show you how to set up the mobile app. Go to your Google Play Store or Apple App Store and search for the app called Acumen Cam with no space. And this is the app right here. Install it. Allow. Next, go to the Wi-Fi setting on your phone. And now looking at the Wi-Fi setting on the phone, you see there's SSID Acumen XR10 Plus. Select that. Now enter the dash cam's Wi-Fi password. This password is actually shown on the right side of the LCD screen. Right here it tells you the password is 12345678. Now it's connected. Let's go back to the app. So right now you're looking at the live view from the dash cam. To switch between the front camera and back camera view, you can tap the screen right here. You see a number two came up. And right now you're looking at the back camera view. Press it again to switch it back to number one. Let's go into settings. Here you can change the resolution. Record audio on or off. Loop recording set to 3 minutes, TV mode, format the SD card, and revert back to factory default. So let's take this to the vehicle, get it installed, I'll show you the features on this dash cam, 
and we'll check out the daytime and nighttime recording. To install the mirror dash cam, place this in front of the factory mirror, wrap the rubber strap around the mirror, and hook it to the bottom hook. Do the same thing with the other strap. Connect the power cable. Now the length of this cable is 11 feet long. Next, connect the rear camera cable. The length of this cable is 32 feet long. And it's very nice, they provided this very long cable, so you can install this in any vehicle. Next, connect the GPS antenna. The cable length on this is 5 feet. Go ahead and run this cable towards the passenger side. With the power cable and rear camera cable, run this up to the headliner and over to the A-pillar. Pull back the weather stripping. Let's run this rear camera cable up along the edge right here. Now you need to be careful and keep the cable away from the side curtain airbag. Run the power cable underneath the dash over to the center console. Plug the power adapter into your 12 volt accessory port. Now remember there's a hardware kit you can install for this dash cam. If you want to install this hardware kit, you do need to connect the red wire and the yellow wire to the fuse box to get constant 12 volt and ignition 12 volt. You also need to connect the black wire to chassis ground. In the middle here, there's a protection circuit. The input is 12 to 24 volt DC. The output is 5 volt at 2.5 amp. And the cutoff voltage is 11.6 volt plus or minus 0.2 volts. What this means is if the car battery drops to 11.6 volt, then the output voltage will be cut off to prevent the car battery from draining so low that you can't start it. On the other end, you need to run this cable all the way up to the dash cam and plug the mini USB connector into the power port of the dash cam. Now I've done many videos on how to install hardware kits in your fuse box, so I'm not going to go over that in this video. But if you want to learn more about it, I will link a video at the end of this video. And also I'll include the link in the description below. Now if you install this hardware kit for this XR10 Plus dash cam, what you will get is this dash cam can do time lapse recording. Now keep in mind one thing about this hardware kit, is the fuse you see here is an ATS fuse. Many cars these days use a mini fuse, so this one might not fit your vehicle. If you run into this, you'll need to cut off this fuse and connect the right fuse tap. With a GPS antenna, remove the backing on the double side tape and then stick this onto the corner of the windshield on the passenger side. The rear camera is waterproof, so you can install this outside the vehicle. If you want to do this, you can install it somewhere above the license plate in the middle right here. Now installing it here will require more work because you will have to route this wire into the vehicle. The other option is to install this camera inside the vehicle behind the back window. Use the included double side tape and screws to install the camera. I'll install the camera behind the back window in this location. I ran the rear camera cable all the way to the back. Next, tuck this cable underneath this weather stripping. Connect the rear camera to the camera cable. Here's a look at the installed camera. As I mentioned, if you connect this red wire to the backup light, when you put the car in reverse, the LCD will switch to a backup view. And the backup view will give you a lower angle view to help you with backing up the car. And if you decide not to connect this wire, then you just won't have that feature. But the dash cam will still record front and rear camera. Use a T-tap to connect the red wire to the positive wire of the backup lights. Start the car up. Once you turn on the ignition, the dash cam will power on and begin recording both the front and rear camera. Right now you're looking at the rear view. If I swipe to the left, there's a split view with the left side showing the front and the right side showing the back. Swipe again. Right now you're looking at the front view. Swipe again. Now we're back to the back view. Now with each of these views, you can adjust the angle of the camera by swiping the screen up and down. Here's the front view. Now if I put the car in reverse, the rear view will switch to a lower angle view to help you with backing up the vehicle. Now even with this view, you can adjust the angle. Now I'll put it back in park. Now when you're using this LCD display during the day or night, you do have the option to turn off the streaming live view and also turn off the LCD completely. To do that, press a power button once. The streaming live view is turned off and you only have the date and time on the right side. Press it again. Now the entire LCD is turned off. Press it again, it'll turn it back on. Now you can also turn on the LCD display by tapping the screen. Let me show you the image you'll see if you were to use this dash cam as a regular mirror. As you can see, the image is quite clear. 
Now one benefit of having this type of LCD rear view mirror is if you have stuff in your back cargo and it's blocking your view out the back window, this LCD rear view mirror will still show you a clear view of the back. It's very helpful if you're backing out of a driveway or out of a parking space. So let me show you how the parking mode work. When you turn off the ignition, the dash cam will shut down and go into standby mode. If it detects an impact to the vehicle, it will record a short 15 second video. After the recording, then it'll go back to standby mode. I'll turn off the ignition right now. I'll simulate an impact by hitting the A pillar. That sound tells you it's now recording a short video. And when it's done recording, it'll have the shutdown sound. One thing I want to mention about the parking monitor recording is if you come back to your vehicle and you open and close the door, the dash cam could possibly detect the impact and begin recording. If you start the vehicle while it's recording, the dash cam will not power on normally. If you experience this, all you have to do is wait until the parking monitor recording is complete and then manually power it on by pressing the power button at the bottom. If you install the hardware kit and go into setup menu, you see the menu item time lapse recording FPS. Here you can select one frame per second or five frames per second. You also have a setting for time lapse recording duration. Here you can set it for two hours, eight hours, 12 hours, or 24 hours. With these settings set, you can go back. When I turn off the ignition, the dash cam will shut down and begin time lapse recording. To play back the recorded video, first stop the recording, press the playback button right here. On the left side are the categories for the recordings. The file name has a date and timestamp, and the F will tell you it's a front video, and the R is for rear video. You can scroll to different pages, select the file to play back, and then tap the screen. Here you can also delete the file if you want. When you're done, go back. And when you're done with the playback, exit out. You can also play back the recorded video using the app. Press the playback icon at the bottom here. So right now we're looking at the camera storage. You can also select regular recording, emergency recording, or photo. And these recordings you're looking at are from the front camera. If you want to look at the rear camera recording, press this icon at the top right here. Here are the rear camera recording. Let's go back to the front camera. Now all these recordings have a date and timestamp. To play back the video, you first need to download the video. Press the select button right here. Select the file. Select download. Now it's downloading this file to the phone. Now the download is not very fast. It took about two minutes to download this video clip. But with the file downloaded, now you can play it back. Now don't forget you also have the option to take the memory card out of the dash cam and play back the recorded video using a card reader.
So as you can see, this Acumen XR10 Plus mirror dash cam has a lot of great features built into it. The LCD display is nice and clear, and doesn't have as much glare as the other mirror dash cams I tested before. The daytime recording is quite clear, and you're able to read license plates in front of you. With a rear camera, it does require some ambient light or street lights to give the picture proper exposure. The parking monitor function works very well, is able to detect any impact to the vehicle, and record a short video. If you install the hardwire power cable, then the dash cam can do continuous time-lapse recording. Now this dash cam also has built-in Wi-Fi for you to connect to a mobile app, but to view the video, you do have to download the video first, and the download time is a bit slow. It might be easier to take the microSD memory card out and put it into a card reader on your computer. As for the GPS antenna, it will record the speed you're traveling at in the video, but this time there's no PC software for you to play back the video and show you the driving coordinates. If you want to learn more about this dash cam, check out the link below. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching this video. To support this channel, remember to click on thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and turn on the notification bell so you get notified of new videos.